the European Union seeks a solution to the surging migrant crisis on the Mediterranean after close to a thousand people die in just one day. It's Music Makers Friday, an award-winning Ghanaian hip-hop sensation delivers a powerful Pan-African message. And we take you to Uganda, where foreign investors are hoping on board the country's rising tourism industry. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCory. This is Africa 54. The United Nations Refugee Agency is praising plans by the European Union to triple its funding for search and rescue operations in the Mediterranean Sea, but added that migrants must have some other avenue to get to safety if the problem of refugee deaths at sea is to be resolved. Following an emergency EU summit in Brussels Thursday, German Chancellor Angela Merkel says their main goal is to save lives and prevent future tragedies. The main task that was top of the agenda today was rescuing people at sea, and that is why we worked on a comprehensive strategy. It is most important for us to make progress on all of these different aspects to prevent, if possible, such tragedies from reoccurring. The pledge came as more migrants rescued at sea arrived in Italy and funeral services were held for some of the 900 migrants who drowned when their ship capsized off the coast of Libya several days ago. France's president François Hollande said he will seek a UN resolution authorizing the EU to destroy boats used by people smugglers to ferry thousands of migrants from North Africa to Europe. Une deuxième décision a donc été prise. A second decision was taken, and it will be for Ms. Frederica Mroheni, EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, to make it happen in the framework of international law. It will be to present all options to annihilate and apprehend the ships and boats used by the traffickers in order for that traffic not to be encouraged by the sea rescue operations. Britain, Germany, Belgium and Ireland all said Thursday they would contribute ships to the new EU maritime operations. Meanwhile, European authorities continue to investigate how the migrant boat capsized on Sunday. Italian prosecutors say the ship's Tunisian captain, who has been arrested, mistakenly steered his boat into a Portuguese merchant ship. When well, attempting the dangerous voyage across the Mediterranean from North Africa to Italy, is not the only path migrants are taking to get to Europe. The Associated Press followed one clandestine group to document their trek through the Western Balkans to Hungary. The refugees started using that route about four years ago. A viewer is Zlatska Hoke has more. This group of more than 40 men, women and children arrived in Greece earlier this year after a long and arduous journey from their countries to Turkey. In Turkey, they paid $500 each for a passage across the sea. Their leader, a man from Ivory Coast, agreed to pilot their overloaded boat to a Greek island in exchange for free passage. He is now leading the group through Macedonia along railway tracks. The group's destination is Hungary, from where migrants can enter Germany, France or some other Western European country without a visa or a passport. Really, you have to have the courage because there are many obstacles. The journey has many aspects because Europe is huge. You think you just go to France, but before arriving there, you have to walk thousands of ways. People in this group are from Ivory Coast, Mali, Cameroon and Burkina Faso. The track through the unknown is fraught with obstacles and danger. But they say the risk is worth it because at the end of the road, there is hope for a new life. Most of us, we are from Africa, and we have many problems in our, our continent, about economic, about, uh, about work. So, like, you can get a diploma, and you don't find the work. Frontex, the EU agency charged with helping the bloc's countries seal their leaky borders, says more than 43,000 illegal crossings were made via the Western Balkans route in 2014, more than double the year before. In the first two months of the year, there have been 22,000 confirmed arrivals in Hungary by that route. We know that when we cross the border, it's against the law. This we understand. When you enter clandestinely into a country, you feel you're a criminal. The feeling is indescribable. 
Travel by night does not guarantee safety. After a chase by flashlight, Macedonian police captured most of the group and deported them back to Greece. The trip has been very hard, too hard. If I knew it was this difficult, I wouldn't have done it. I just can't walk like this. This woman from Cameroon at least got to keep her baby boy, who was born in Greece. Another woman from Ivory Coast got separated from her baby daughter born in Turkey during the police chase in Macedonia. The girl was taken by the handful of people from the group that made it to Serbia. Zlarica Hok, VOA News, Washington. Well, Malawian President Arthur Peter Mutarika says the reason is xenophobic attacks in South Africa, targeting mostly African migrants, are unfortunate. In an exclusive interview with VOA, Mr. Mutarika says he has been in touch with South African President Jacob Zuma and he expects warm diplomatic relations between Lilongwe and Pretoria will remain despite the xenophobic attacks. It's, it's unfortunate uh, that it has happened. Uh, you know, we think uh, how. Uh, people are, uh, but we're working on that. Um, right now, uh, we're prejudicing our people. Yesterday, over 400 people came, uh, and then tomorrow, about a thousand are coming. There's a total of well, close to 4,000, and we hope by the end of next week, all Mayans who want to come back home, they will come back home and we'll assist them in resetting them and so forth. We are doing that already. You know, the economies in Sadek are integrated everywhere in Africa, and in that, that area, whether it's Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe, um, South Africa, of course, Mozambique. You always find nationals from other countries. We have, we have many South Africans, we have Tanzanians, we have Ghanaians, Nigerians, Burundians, uh, Rwandese, Mozambicans. They're all there. Um, this is a very interesting phenomenon, and I, I think the, the, the question is, uh, now the new leadership, uh, we need to, to, to deal with this, uh, and uh, we're working on it. I'm in touch uh, with um, you know, my brother, uh, President Zuma. Uh, we'll be talking, and uh, next week we we'll have a summit of SADC in Harare. Well, South Africa's xenophobic attacks are likely to be high on the agenda during the Southern African Development Community meetings set for the Zimbabwean capital, Harare, April the 29th. Well, Kenya launched a major police recruitment drive this week as part of a large-scale effort to boost security following a recent spate of terror attacks. Uh, VOA Gabe Jocelyn reports that allegations of corruption in the process are raising old concerns about the integrity of Kenya's security forces. At Nyayo Stadium in Nairobi, hundreds of police recruits vie for positions in the national force. The rigorous examination includes a medical check and physical fitness tests that few can pass. One candidate told local media he was turned away because he was missing some teeth. Still, thousands are coming out across the country, and the officer in charge of this exercise, Rashid Mohammed, is pleased. And in my view, honestly, the turnout is quite remarkable. It is good, as far as I'm concerned. Kenya launched the recruitment drive in the wake of the April 2nd terrorist attack on Garissa University College in the Northeast. Al-Shabaab militants killed nearly 150 people, most of them students, in a merciless assault that shocked and horrified the nation. That we are one indivisible... President Uhuru Kenyatta immediately ordered the recruitment of 10,000 police as part of a promise to dismantle terrorist networks in Kenya. We will not allow them to continue their lives as normal. The full force of the law will be brought to bear with even greater intensity than has been the case in previous years. But Kenya's police force has a tainted past. Last year's recruitment was halted by court order due to allegations of corruption. The court said spots on the force were acquired through extortion, bribery and favoritism. Mr. Kenyatta had to overturn the order for this year's exercise to go ahead. Kenyan lawyer Donald Rabala has reservations about starting the process again without resolving those earlier complaints. I was approached by uh, several clients who wanted the recruitment for last year stopped simply because there was a lot of corruption which was involved. Things happened, some people got letters without even going through the recruitment process. A 2014 Transparency International survey found Kenyans believe the police force to be the most corrupt institution in the country by far. While the government has called for substantial long-term reform of the security forces, for now, battling the urgent threat of terrorism has taken the front seat. 
Gabe Joslow, VOA News, Nairobi. The U.S. military says Iranian cargo ships which may be carrying weapons for Houthi rebels in the war torn Yemen are now moving away from that country. Word of the retreat comes as Yemen's foreign minister accused Iran of attempting to break a naval blockade aimed at keeping its weapons out of the hands of the rebels. Uh, VOA's Paul Sisko, Sisko reports. Iran. Iran, which is supposed to send aid and medical supplies to the Yemen people, is still sending warships loaded with weapons, like they want to inflame the conflict again. White House officials have said they've seen evidence that Iran supplied arms to the Shiite Houthis in Yemen. The U.S. Defense Department has deployed warships to Yemeni waters to ensure that key Gulf shipping channels stay open. Military officials deny the U.S. fleet is there to intercept Iranian ships. In Yemen, Saudi-led coalition warplanes struck rebel targets Thursday near the southern port of Aden, setting off protests in the capital Sana'a against the airstrikes. The Saudis announced earlier this week that they will end the campaign of airstrikes, but would start the bombing again if necessary. A month of airstrikes has killed hundreds of civilians and destroyed homes, but have generally failed to stop the Houthis and return Western-backed President Abd Rabu Mansur Hadi to Yemen. He is currently in exile in Saudi Arabia. The head of United Nations operations in Yemen says the conflict must be settled at the negotiating table. I'm convinced that the assumption of peace talks uh, uh, is inevitable. I don't think it's possible at this point in time to specifically identify the period, the moment, when and where this will occur, but certainly it will occur. All the parties are aware that there is no other solution than a diplomatic, political, negotiated settlement here. The UN spokesman says unseen diplomatic discussions will eventually overtake the military conflict and bring about what he called good results in the coming weeks. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon has nominated Mauritanian diplomat, uh, diplomat Ishmael Aoud Sheikh Ahmed as his new special envoy to Yemen. His appointment could be confirmed Monday, barring any objections by the 15 members Security Council. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, planning your next vacation? Well, Uganda is emerging as a hot tourist destination. Stay with us. It's Music Makers Friday, and today we have hip-hop with a different kind of message. Ghanaian hip-hop sensation Adam just won the 2015 Music Video of the Year at the Ghana Music Awards for his song, The Worm. Music Time in Africa host Heather Maxwell spoke with Adam just yesterday, and she's here to tell us a little more about Adam. Yeah. So he won this award. He won Music Video of the Year Award. He yeah. also won Best Afro Pop Song yeah. of the Year, which is a different song than the song in the video. Yeah. And he won Best Album of the Year. Yeah. W what is uh, significant about this particular video? I mean, you watched it, but you spoke to him also about yes. uh, how he did this and uh, why. What he says about the video is, uh, the message really is, he was saying a lot of his fans, he's a young artist and yeah. hip, -hop, hip hop people, in Africa all over even around the world they're young they tend yeah. to be young and 
uh, he said his fans don't necessarily read the history books yeah. like they should. So they need to. And so he wanted to do a music video that retold the history yeah. of Ghana and slavery in this case, but also cast a light on those who stood up yeah. and were victorious against it. Yeah. And so um, that's what the music video is about. It's a beautiful artistic Let's watch story. it and see how it captures history. Yeah. Uh, this is the one. I'll be the savior of the game, I'm the only one. When nobody there but me, I'm the chosen one. I got a seat for the throne till the day I'm gone. I am the one, the one, the one. Let's go. Come on, y'all, get him. Hello, hi, rappers. I make you know the better. Eh? Wow. I get too many stars, but you go ask your area, Baba. Hey. What's underrated, but we sip on top, Salif Keita. The undefeated, undisputed, fled me weather. No money on the key, don't count. For five, if you're my bagang. Come on, you're Bobby, no name, you're touching them, you're putting them, you're the Dano. I feel like I got the music, you're the one for quite a monu. What for no? In Tonchi, you're for Tomo, come in, you're going to 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 come in, you're from one single atom, that he put heat and even Eden. From there we know what happened and now I'm scaring. My Mac got up, look at that, but the apple was eaten. We came a long way, running there, we get ready for deliverance. We will get you there. Now me and Adam, and them said I'm not bumping track. Who say the rap, let me run with that. I didn't even plan to say that. Just have a little fun with that. Indeed, a very different kind of video, being a hip-hop, tight, non-assistic kind of uh, approach or women and, and so on and so exactly. forth. Exactly. Yeah, as you said, it did actually quote even some wisdom from an African leader. At the very end of the music video, he yeah. quotes Nelson Mandela yeah. and um, talks about, um, it's a pan-African message, yeah. you know, that we all want to feel, um, to be able to live with pride with yeah. who, in who we are, regardless of our color or our ethnicity and it's just really beautiful. Adam is a special kind of a rapper. Yeah. He, he really believes in education, that's the main message. Exactly. And he believes that music should be um, a way to impact positively yeah. on the continent yeah. um, and even to spread around the world. He's yes. very, very, very... I like the way it doesn't conform to the, to the stereotype of uh, hip hop rap. Uh, the message, the, the style is there, yes. but the message is profound. Yes. So different. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Heather, You're uh, for joining us today. Well, um, for um, to learn more about uh, Heather uh, and her radio show, visit Facebook and type in the keywords "music time in Africa," and you can see what time the program can be heard in your area and get more information about some of our featured artists. Well. Uh, but our tourism is one of the fastest growing sectors in Uganda, employing more than 600,000 people. Uh, foreign investors are now taking advantage of this growth by investing in high quality safari lodging facilities. VOA's Paul Ndiho visited Western Uganda and has a report. Uganda is blessed with some of the most spectacular scenic wonders of the world. Its geographical diversity and wide range of vegetation and wildlife make it a unique tourist destination. The tourism industry has been growing steadily over the last couple of years and more than a million tourists visit the country each year. The sector is a major creator of jobs and public records indicate that the government earned about $1.4 billion from tourism. 
Ugandan tourism is largely private sector driven and as a result foreign investors are eager to bankroll tourism projects, putting their money where their mouth is. Chaninga Lodge in the Fort Potro district of western Uganda opened nearly four years ago and it's quickly becoming a tourist stopover for lodging and sightseeing. Set against a stunning backdrop of Lake Chaninga under the legendary Mountains of the Moon, the lodge has spectacular views and is close to Queen Elizabeth National Park and Chivari National Park, Africa's premier destination to watch chimpanzees. Richard Twestje is the head barman at Chaninga Lodge. It came about by the owner, Steve Williams. Uh, he was traveling around Uganda and happened to hear about the chimps, chimpanzees. And uh, he came up. As he was looking around, he fell in love with this place and uh, came up with an idea that he could start up a lodge. Tresje says until recently there was nothing around in this area. But since uh, this uh, luxury safari lodge was built, there has been a lot of traffic and uh, land in the neighborhood has risen in value. It's really special to the locals. Much of their land is appreciating because of this. Originally, this place was not known. Now it's known almost in the whole of Uganda. During my travels in Uganda, I ran into tourists from the United States and Australia. Katie Pop is from Atlanta, Georgia. This is my first time here and I'm just getting started with the sightseeing and visiting different places. But the scenery is so beautiful. I love the scenery. It's a beautiful countryside so far. Businessman Ben Anderson echoes the same sentiment. If you look at around the view out around here, and there are so many things to do, especially if you love the nature and you love the scenery, and uh, there are quite a lot of things to do, and I think it's absolutely beautiful, this part of Uganda. Property owner Steve Williams and a team of locals have carefully handcrafted thousands of logs to create this exceptional design. The sheer scale of the main lodge is immediately apparent from the moment one crests the hill. The lodge's eight cottages are built on plantations and set apart to offer privacy and tranquility. Rosalinda McLeamont is not just an American tourist, but she's returned to the area after a nearly 40-year absence. She taught at a nearby Nyakasura Secondary School from 1973 to 1974. The architecture is amazing. Uh, it's, it's high up. You get your exercise just climbing the stairs to get to the main building and to get to your room. So it's, it does a number of things. The air is so fresh and clean. The surroundings are just, listen, you can hear the birds. Visitors on safari in Uganda can also enjoy culture tours, game drives, boat rides and hiking as the country prides itself as having the best lands for exploring the real beauty of Africa. Paul Niho, VOA News, Washington. Well, it's time now for a short break still to come on Africa 54. A California court hands Kim and Kanye a victory. We'll be right back. Without concrete actions, the Bandung flame will extinguish. Welcome back to Africa 54. Here's what's trending. A victory for Kim and Kanye. 
The couple has been authorized by a California appeals court to proceed with their lawsuit against YouTube co-founder Chad Holly. Uh, the suit stems from uh, Kanye's 2013 proposal to Kim, which Holly filmed and posted to his website Mixpeed despite signing a confidentiality agreement. Holly based his case on free speech, uh, but the court ruled that Kim and Kanye could win a case based on claims of fraud and just enrichment and breach of contract. Stay tuned. Wasani Yang is on a truly special assignment where he met with a special Olympian from Botswana. Sunny? I'm at Special Olympics headquarters here in downtown Washington. A group of 12 Special Olympics International Global Messengers visited Washington this week. They came from all over the world to spread the message about the program for intellectually disabled athletes. I had a chance to talk with one of the messengers, 22-year-old Brightfield Shaddy from Botswana. Uh, Bright, welcome to the program. It's my pleasure, sir. My role as an IGM of Special Olympics is to help the movement to grow, as to spread the word of Special Olympics out there. What type of advice do you give new athletes in Special Olympics? The advice that I will give to new athletes of Special Olympics is that each and every day they go into the field, they should know, they have to do their best because they will never know. Maybe that's where you belong, that's where you, you have more experience. Yes, I will be in Los Angeles as an IGM and besides that, the team that, as earlier as I told you, the team that I told you that I'm a player coach of, it will be taking part in the game, so I will be there. Finally, Bright, do you see uh, your future role in Special Olympics, maybe as a coach? Yeah, I can see my future role in Special Olympics as a coach because I would like to talk about this team so much because that is where I spend most of my time doing, taking part of in Special Olympics, growing the movement and Brightfield Shaddy, our guest today on Africa 54. Thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot, son. And that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on our website at voaafrica.com. Uh, for more news, tune in to VOA's evening radio show, Africa News Tonight at 1800 UTC and in the mornings. Today, break Africa between 0300 and 0600 UTC, Monday through Friday. Thanks a lot for watching. From all of us in Washington, have a good night and a great weekend. Music is something that brings people together. Music educates, it motivates, it's a bridge. Music, Alley, on VOA. Kubana VOA, wahan kusoo gudbinna kubana yal goz goz awo xi sabbadano kusabsan arrimaha Somalia, maraikanka iyo aalam kaba. Haddaba kubana ha VOA da kala soo uwa bseet ke na VOA Somali dat com. From VOA Learning English, this is the Technology Report. I'm Milar Sega. I'm the host of VOA's The Correspondence. A roundup of the world's top stories. Here's a false choice in more ways than one. We can't actually put you there, but we can come pretty close. In 30 minutes, we'll show you the world.